Well, here we are. It's hotter than hell. I always said if I ever filled another one of these with water, I would make a video on how to bleed the air out of the system because everybody's always asking that question. So, the easiest way to do it is to hang this from the hood, but this car doesn't have a hood on it. We've got the radiator put back in it. And also, the easiest way to do it is take the air box out because this hose is underneath the air box and it will hold this down too far. You can get a piece of hose and extend this out, you know, fitting and all that, but it's just easier to pull the air box out. You gotta put the lid of the air box on so you have the mass airflow sensor back on the car. And like I said, normally support this from the hood. I got it sitting on a stick because I don't have a hood on this car. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the radiator up with uh, coolant and then we'll start the bleeding procedure. I just save my old antifreeze jugs and mix it 50-50 so I can pour it straight in. It won't fill real fast because it's just going through the small lines. And there it is locked on me. So one of the things I normally do Bring this camera around. I disconnect this line off the back that comes off the top of the head. Just lay it back here. That lets the air come out of the block, keeps it from air locking like it did right there. This vent, I usually pull it all the way out. Forgot to do that earlier. That vent lets air out of the top of the radiator. Leaving this hose open lets air out of the top of the block and the head. Uh, Cooling will start coming out of that when it's full. Or nearly full. You'll still have to purge it. Squeezing the hose down here like that. That'll help move air through the system. Squeezing the hose on the other side because it's lower down. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but I can hear air moving around. trying to watch the level in the coolant container so I don't get it over the top of these. It's up about right here right now. Oh, I don't know if you saw the coolant just come out of that hose, but all right. That means there's water through the majority of the system. There's still going to be air pockets in the head. That's why you have to purge these. The higher you get this, the more, the faster, the better, the easier it is to get the air out of. Okay, that buzzing sound you hear is the alternator. It's damaged. Uh, but anyway, so what you got to do now is you got to run the motor and let the air come up to the top. I know water circulating because this hose is warm and if I pull it off there's a little bit of water coming out of it. Keep this coolant can full. Squeeze on the lower hose a little bit. That helps it. Make sure this hose is warm. This hose right here has to stay warm. If it's not warm, that means water's not flowing. Also, the other thing is, is right now the heater is full hot. So that water will flow through the heater core too.
What I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for it to get enough warm water through it for the thermostat to open. Once the thermostat opens, the hose over here will be hot and that'll let me know that water's flowing through the radiator and everything else. As long as I keep water up in this while I do this, I shouldn't overheat the motor or burn anything up. Pulling that hose out lets me know that my radiator is completely full of water. So now I'm just, like I said, I'm waiting for it to get circulating real good. Also, if you look down through this hole, you'll be able to see water flowing through it. Coming out of this hose. And once it starts circulating good, a little bit at all, see, this hose is starting to warm up. Radiator hose on this end is already warm, so it's moving a good amount of water. Right now the alternator is disconnected because I don't know how much damage is done to it. I mean the alternator is ruined from the wreck, but so I'm assuming that's probably what's giving it a little bit of a hard time running. Oh, I never did plug the uh, mass airflow sensor in again. There we go, now it's running with the mass airflow sensor. You can do this without the mass airflow sensor. I always just put it on there. I don't know if the camera caught that, but that alternator just fed a piece out through that little hole. So it's no longer making noise. The upper hose right now, right here, is hot. This hose is good and warm. This hose hasn't warmed up yet, so it hasn't done a full... It's circulating coolant, but it's not circulating coolant at full volume yet. Once the thermostat opens, it'll circulate coolant at full volume, and that's what flushes all the air pockets out. If you don't get all the air out, they will airlock and overheat. is still not hot so it hasn't opened up yet the thermostat hasn't opened yet so but as long as these hoses are hot especially this one right here that lets you know water's moving through it and like I said you can look in there and you can see water wiggling around down in the bottom of that hole you know that water's starting to flow through it
temperature gauge is at normal now, so the thermostat should open very soon. That hose is a little bit warm now, so it may have opened for a split second, but it hasn't really started circulating yet. open now. So it's open now. Pull the funnel out. You look down in there. You can see it circulating water. So you know it's circulating now. Radiator hose is hot. Fans are cycling on and off. So once those fans have cycled off and on a couple times, once the fans have cycled off and on a couple times, you know it's circulating. So you can see water flowing into this chamber here. Once this valve is closed, that stays pretty well full. And then you can see all about to the center line. So with the car sitting here like this and no air flowing over the radiator, that thermostat will stay open most of the time and the fans will control the temperature of the engine. So So what you do is just let it circulate a while, rev it up a little bit every once in a while. And of course this car won't be going on a test drive, but a test drive of a mile or two and then check your coolant level again. So once you tighten that cap, don't open that cap back up hot. Don't even open the vent tube when it's hot. Let it cool off for a little while before you do any of that. Uh, before I put the cap back on, I'll put these clamps back up where they belong. And like I said, it's always easy to say, just hang this from the hood. That way you don't have to have it balanced on a stick. Walk around here, we'll check the temperature. And 
and that's where mine normally runs at so that's looking good all I'm gonna do now is just let it run long enough to cycle the fans again and then I'll uh, shut it down make sure my coolant level is right up there once I remount this and then take it for a drive and there's the fan Just shut off so I'm gonna shut the motor off and uh, like I said what you what you do at this point is remount the water bottle into its bracket put your air cleaner back together take it for a test drive and check your water one more time There's the cap. Oh, one other thing about these cars. If, if a car like this, a 7th Gen Celica gets in a wreck and you even think there's radiator damage, don't trust this bottle being full to tell you that there's water in the radiator. Uh, because this bottle will stay up even though the radiator is broken. So if you run the motor then, it'll overheat you know, blow head, gasket, cracked head, something like that. Uh, I know this because I bought one and somebody had tried to run it and I noticed there was coolant in it but I also noticed the radiator was broken and when I put a new radiator in it or another radiator that I had in it and got it all filled up, it was uh, blowing bubbles bad so it's, you know, warped the head because it was ran. Like I said, these these will keep water in them even if the radiator is busted. I don't know why, but they do. Anyway, I always said if I ever had to, one of these to fill up after seeing as many questions about how to bleed them, I'd go ahead and do it. It's uh, a little bit of a pain in the ass, but there's nothing real technical to it. Hope this helps somebody.